Number 38. Consider the following metals. Silver, gold, magnesium, nickel, and zinc. Which of these metals could be used as a sacrificial anode in the cathodic protection of an underground steel storage tank? Ooh. Steel is an alloy composed mostly of iron, so use negative 0.447 volts as the standard reduction potential for steel. Okay, so we basically want to know, out of these five metals, which one, or they may be a couple of them, which one is going to be a sacrificial anode? Now, they, they're saying it in terms of sacrificial anode because an anode, remember, is always talking about oxidation. So anode is always oxidation. And we could remember that because anox, right? So there's red cat for cathode and reduction, anox for anode oxidation. Now we're just throwing in one other word here. It's a sacrificial anode because if you're undergoing oxidation, you're sacrificing the metal because the metal is going to start corroding. This is where corrosion happens. When I think of corrosion, I always go back to iron because iron over time will rust. That's corrosion. And that's kind of like a sacrifice, right? Over time, the, the metal is not going to be any good anymore because it's just corroding. It's oxidizing into another form of iron. So we want to know, out of these five, which one can be that sacrificial anode? Well, we still want to basically go through the whole formula of this, right? In order to find out what's really truly going to be the cathode and which one's going to be the anode, we need to find out what the total E cell is. Now, they did say that we're, you know, we have to protect that steel storage tank. So the, the steel storage tank is iron. We don't want this to corrode. We want one of these five to corrode. And they're saying that we're going to use iron as the standard reduction potential, and reduction is always the cathode. So this is reduction. And just like we said before, the anode is oxidation. That's the sacrificial anode because it's undergoing oxidation. It's, be it's going to corrode. And in this case, since we have to protect the iron, I have to use a negative 0.447 volts every single time for the cathode. Okay, so minus the anode is going to be different. Insert all five of these values to get out the E cell. So let's just run through them, right? Here are the five E values, which I did the hard work for you. I went to the back of the textbook already to find out all those E values. So let's go for it. We got AG, we have AU, we have magnesium, MG. I'm going to try to streamline this as much as possible. We have nickel and we have zinc. Let me just throw magnesium in the middle. Okay. Now, we're going to say that we have to solve for the E cell, right? So E cell equals for all of these. We're trying to find out what the E cell of that value would be. So I'm just setting it up here. And now, since we want to protect that iron every single time, the cathode number is always going to be the same. Negative 0.447 negative 0 0.447, negative 0 0.447, negative 0 0.447, negative 0 0.447. And maybe what I'll do is I'll just maybe bring these down because it's getting a little crowded here. So now I'm just going to say that it's always cathode minus the anode. So here comes that negative value and the zinc's having a hard time in this spot. So maybe I'll bring it over here. Minus. And now I'm including my sacrificial anode, the one that's being oxidized. And just know that if you're using cathode minus anode, no need to change any of these values. So now I'm just going to go and find the value for each element and plug it in. So for AG, 
it's a 0 0.7996. For AU, it's the 1.692. Magnesium is the negative 2.372. The nickel is a negative 0 0.257. And the zinc is a negative 0 0.7618. And maybe if I can, zinc, zinc needs a lot of help. There we go. Maybe I'll pull the magnesium over a little bit. All right, we're getting there. Okay, so now I'm just going to find out all of the E-cell values. So E-cell, E-cell. What is this E-cell? What is this E cell? And what is this E cell? Okay, so I'm going one by one. We'll do silver. Negative 0.447 minus 0.7996. And I'm just checking to make sure that I plugged in all the right answers here. And that's a volt. All right, so I got the first answer. Let's just get all of them, so I'll do the gold next, negative 0.447 minus 1.692. Okay, another negative value, negative 2.139, cool. Let's just get all the E values and then we'll find out what is the right answer. Point, negative 0.447 minus a negative 2.372. Okay, so this one is positive, 1.925 volts. Okay, let's do the nickel, negative 0.447 minus negative 0.257. This is a negative value, negative 0.19 volts. Okay, and the last one is negative 0.447 minus a negative... 0.7618. I get a positive 0.3148. I'm not including sig figs here because that's not really the basis of this question. Because now what we have to do is we have to figure out which of the metals. The numbers aren't the right answer, but the numbers will tell you the right answer. Because which of the metals can be used as a sacrificial anode? Remember, if it's a sacrificial anode, it's going to corrode. We're going to protect the, the steel storage uh, tank. But remember, we need this to be a spontaneous reaction. And only when an E cell value is positive is it spontaneous. So maybe I'll just put spawn. Spontane. So now I'm just going to look at those E values. This E cell is a negative so, eh, this is non-spontaneous. Silver will not be able to do it. Let's look at gold. Another negative value. Eh, sorry. AU is not going to be able to be that anode. But now when I look at magnesium, that's a positive value. So magnesium is one of the answers. And maybe I'll make this, like, green. Just so that kind of stands out. So magnesium is one of them. Let's see. Nickel is a negative, so bye-bye. That's not going to be a spontaneous reaction. And zinc is a positive. So that's the other one. So you only got two answers here. You got magnesium being the sacrificial anode, and you have zinc, and that is the answer. Let's just color this in very nicely. I love coloring. That was one of my favorite classes in school. Color, color, color. Okay, and now I'm doing chem videos. How life turns out, right? Anyway, this is the final answer, magnesium and zinc. Thank you so much for viewing the video. I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. We are almost at 30,000 subscribers, and it's all because of you guys. Thank you so much for your support throughout the years and for using this, this channel as a, you know an educational research for learning physics, math, and chem val uh, videos. Go check the channel out. We have over five, over 4,000 videos at the moment with, you know, big plans for the future. So thank you. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.